Hello and welcome to Blockchain Gaming World episode 111. I'm your host Sean Jordan and I'm very pleased today that I have Vincent Marty from Darewise. How's it going? Hi John, hi. Super happy, it's excited to be here. Good. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Life Beyond, which is the product that you've been working on for uh, quite a long time. Um, yeah. Many twists and turns along the way, but uh, good timing now. You're, you're, you're just coming to the sort of the first, the first playable for people. So plenty to talk about. Um, but as ever, do you want to give us a bit of a sort of potted history to uh, what you have been up to <laughs> over the last few years? Yes, absolutely. Happy to. So, um, yeah, I'm Vincent. I'm... 39th now. Uh, I'm you about to, tell to be. Us, don't tell us that. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm about to be a father for the second time, so super excited. Oh, it, 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 it's about to happen. Um, and I've been in the gaming industry for well, yeah, 15 years plus now. Um, always a mix between entrepreneurship and uh, like bigger company. Um, I've started as a as an entrepreneur after my my in software engineering diploma building uh, uh, software for uh, gambling platforms and um, and and kind of early stage of what we call now uh, um, skill gaming mm -hmm. and um, and after after a while I moved to uh, more proper AAA companies uh, Ubisoft where I spent a few years driving marketing and and uh, distribution for Europe um, especially focusing on Free to play and digital games uh, back in the days, and when this is where I met um, this is where I met uh, Benjamin, uh, the CEO of Dellwise, with mm -hmm. whom we've decided after some time that we wanted to do things a little bit differently than Ubisoft. Uh, we, we were super heavy PC gamers, uh, really into MMOs and and kind of you know social interaction during gaming. And uh, and that's where we we started to create uh, Dailwise, uh back in 2016, um, which is which was at that time a very different, you know, marketplace. And even us as a company, we, we were very different than what we have right now. And um, after trying different things, um, always in with that that in mind that uh, gaming could be the next social media platform, um, we decided in 2018 to in source more of, of our development and uh, start working on Life Beyond uh, with those core pillars of um, developing a massive world, online world for players to encounter and have fun, um, but also to be able to self-drive the economy of the game, uh, maybe even own a piece of it, make a living out of it. That was prior to the whole uh, uh, Web3 and crypto gaming space, play to earn kind of discussions um, and so we were at that time even considering developing our own contracts not linked to the blockchain whatever and it was very funny um, <laughs> and, uh, and and very strange because we were very early on and and you know we didn't have any any core game vision at that point it was more like R&D stuff and tech development stuff mm -hmm. and uh, and that's what that was nice. And I think, so, I think um, when, sorry, uh, to interrupt, I think when I first came across it, I was it's sort of I can't remember what it means like 2018, 2019, something like that. And it was a very difficult project. Um, to yeah. sort of work. I was like, is it on the blockchain? What exactly is it? It's you know, it's, yeah. it was sort of and it sort of stood out for that because it wasn't like you know, we're building an MMORPG on the blockchain and yeah, it's going to be basically World of Warcraft on the blockchain. It, was, it had a very different sort of vision, which uh, I guess was sort yeah, of both think, confusing and sort of tantalizing. <laughs> exactly, because we, we were not using the traditional blockchain terminology, mm. but the idea behind it was probably very close to that. Mm. And so that's why it was a little bit of a, a mix and match at that time. And and in 20, 2020, late 2020, beginning 2021, we decided, okay, it's time for us to properly embrace the blockchain because it has all the components from a technological and philosophical standpoint that uh, actually supports the game vision that we have for Life Beyond. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's the uh, uh, the true ownership through NFT, uh, whether it's the compatibility of a smart contract, whether it's you know be able to uh, 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 create that whole ecosystem um, that is more um, you know player driven kind of centric in the sense of uh, being able to let them actually get a reward for the time spent in the game. Um, I, I, th this this became obvious for us that blockchain was actually the technological platform uh, for us to, to embrace and, and move uh, life beyond fully on. And so, yeah, last year we decided to um, to move with, uh, with the Polygon on most of these things on Polygon blockchain. Uh, still a lot of work to do, to be honest, but um, 
it's getting there. And uh, we got the chance to also uh, uh, cut the attention of Animuka Brands, and yes. they acquired a uh, majority stake in, in their wise uh, a few months ago. So definitely, after I guess a long gestation period where you've gone through yes. many different sort of ideas, is 2022 has been quite a <laughs> quite a yes. busy year and going to get more busy. Um, so, I mean, you sort of spoken there a little bit about how you came up with this sort of concept of, of life beyond, uh, and sort of that was sort of blockchain sort of wasn't part of it there, although you sort of yeah. you did experiment with some digital items on a sort of blockchain back in the day, and mm. and, and, and 2020 you kind of come, it comes more into focus. Um, how did the did the blockchain was it sort of a seamless sort of thing or was when you sort of thought we're gonna we are gonna put this you know more formally on a blockchain did that sort of change the anything in the game or, or no I, I actually it didn't change no. much in the game no. it, it was more like uh, 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 enhancing some of the pillars that we were struggling a little bit to formalize in the game mm. uh, you know where uh, when when we're saying okay we want to we want a player driven economy we want the, the players to be able to say okay I'm going to put out a job ad for someone to help me with this particular task in the game and, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, okay to pay this person, whether it's with in-game uh, currency or, or tokens or whatever. We had that back in the days, but it was a very, you know, a very complex task to properly put in place uh, because not only we wanted that to live within the game, but we also had the vision that could, that could live outside of the game. Mm. Um, and so those kind of things at some point, you know, were so obvious that the blockchain could could help us with that in, in, in such, you know, tremendously, almost lim- seamless way, even though it's it's still technology development and it's very early on, so a lot of hurdles there. But that that, that didn't change very much the vision, at, uh, probably not at all. Uh, it changed a little bit more the tools and the bricks and the, and the, and the, the roadmap that we had, um, okay. not definitely not the vision. Mm-hmm. So we haven't really dug into what it is yet. I've sort of been yeah. waving my arms around <laughs> and saying I didn't understand it. Um, so uh, I, I guess, you know, can you talk a little bit about ex- exactly what it is? MMO yes. uh, on PC. Um, yeah. And But what are, what are we actually doing in this game? What's sort of the setting? What are, you know? Absolutely. So Life Beyond is a sci-fi uh, fantasy online world. Um, it's a vast, persistent, always on uh kind of game kind of uh ecosystem where the player will have to create a new society and we g- will give them the choice to which kind of society they want to they want to build um they will have to do the power to shape the economy the politics the the look and feel of it uh the way everything interacts um and this is what we call you know the, the a play and earn mmo where the fun and the actions are first and foremost to uh, interact, create interaction with the players and have fun, and then there are some mechanism and, and usability for a lot of items, uh, even even tokenized tokenized one. Um, in Life Beyond, you will you will do well. The game revolves around what we call three eras. Um, the first era is the one that we're introducing in a few days. It's called pioneering. Pioneering is this time where a player comes into the game, come on Dolos, the planet they are bound to explore and settle in. Um, and during that time, uh, what they have to do is go out there alone or with a crew, explore mm-hmm. the planet and remove the threats that still exist on there. There have been some alien technologies and alien tentative of colonization of that planet and remain some defenses and threats and you have to fight those and okay. encounter and discover some secrets out there. Um, and what that's done, uh, basically, the the territories or the area or the region you are on becomes uh, viable becomes uh, available for you to actually settling and start building that 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 colony or that that society and that's the second era and the second era is what we call the settling era and this is where you're going to enter more like a sims kind of life uh type of of gameplay where you're going to have to build your your house your factory your farms whatever you can you, you will be able to, uh, uh, you know, build roads, uh, become, you know, work in the transportation world if you want to uh, help people get their goods from point A to point B. Basically, this is where the 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 uh, the, uh, the, eco- the the society will will thrive. Mm-hmm. Um, and after a while, we we believe that the 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 player will have 
played and, and stabilizing of the economy of this region to enter the third era, which is called the uh, governance era. And during that time or during that, that gameplay moment, player will have the tools to actually decide what type of civilization they want to they, they wanna live in, you know, whether it's going to be autocratic or fully distributed, very communist or, you know, wh whatever they want. So we're going to give them the tools and that's is where we are or we are looking at, you know, more like DAOs and decentralized organization kind of type of things where we're going to progressively hand over the kind of the whole game story to the players. Mm -hmm. Um, what is important to understand is that not th the three eras will not be always sequential. Some yeah. part of the world could be unexplored and still in pioneering state. Some other part of the world could be very advanced and more like governance state. And that's mm -hmm. also why it's, it's appealing for every type of player. You want to be yeah. an action type of player, then you're going to go exploring only the game and maybe you don't care about owning a house in, or yeah. a bar or whatever. Um, if you're more into economic driven kind of things and more like like social interaction kind of thing, uh, maybe settling is the best thing for you. Um, uh, the sort type of play could be okay. My, my my role is more like guild leader or those kind of things. I want to make decisions. I want to embrace that that politic aspect of the game. Then maybe you'll be thriving more towards the um, the governance uh, aspect of it. So this is this is all those things that we're building. So as you can imagine, it's not one game, but multiple mm -hmm. set of games that we're uh, uh, merging into one. But we're very fortunate to have, I think, one of the most experienced team out there right now, uh, with people coming from Ubisoft with 30 years plus experience in developing massive games, AAA games. People from um, from from uh, those big companies, Epic and and uh, massive and what's not you know we, we have we have a crew of about 100 people now uh yeah, really? working, the, working, working on this game yeah mm -hmm. so yeah this is this is life beyond in a nutshell and we, we're super excited because it, it starts shaping up really really nicely i i, I guess as is always the case with these sort of sort of big worlds is how are you how sort of hands-on are you in sort of sort of stopping players doing things and sort of shaping them so it doesn't doesn't always you know because you imagine basically what's going to happen is if there's if there's no handrails at all then people are just going to go around yeah sh shoot blowing everything up all the time <laughs> exactly <laughs> I mean, sort of you know um so so how do you sort of handle that sort of so we, or, or, we or, is that not the point yeah i think the, the point is really the point is to i don't know imagine you know the the, the wild west you know when people were discovering mm. america um it's a little bit that the same feeling here that we want to give the players uh, the chance to to taste a little bit. You know, you can you can decide to to do things kind of the right way and and, and embrace this this aspect of community and we all heal together and we try to you know protect the planet at the same time get the best out of it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Or you can decide let's let's fuck everything up, you know, and uh, just grab everything we can, uh, be a little bit selfish, and that's fine. What we want to give people is a sense of ownership in the decision of how the game evolves and how the community within this game evolves um and and i think you know there is no good or bad in this game um because one one, one key element is that there is no combat pvp in this you're not fighting actively other players you know, like shooting at each other or anything it's a little bit more there's going to be some some pvp aspect but it's more like going to be political or economical or a little bit more subtle than this um and that's why we think it's it's interesting to give the people the choice to how they want to see this game develop and people will will fight each other in different ways um yeah. to to participate in that experience uh, how they see fit um we're not going to prevent anything where well obviously we're gonna we're gonna still have a frame uh, around the game because we still I, I, one of the key elements for us is that in order to make a a, a game that is last long, long lasting, you need to have an immersive experience. In, in, an immersive experience comes with a little bit of consistency. So, um, as much as we want to potentially position Life Beyond at some point into like one this one metaverse destination, um, it's not going to be like like Ready Player One when you're going to have flying cows and you know knights in shiny armors next to goblins and next to you know. Mm. sci-fi warriors um we still got to try to to connect all of those dots um but beyond beyond that i mean you know if if 
you want to say that the the next big thing to do in this game is just to have bars and parties, so be it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sort of, I'm sort of thinking that there's sort of not no user generated content yeah. from you guys in the early stages. But if the ten years time if the DAO wants to fund user generated tools, then they can do that. I mean, that's the sort of the, the, yeah. the spectrum. Is you want to you guys want to have enough control to sort of set up the experience that you've sort of had had in your initial vision, and then but then where it goes after you have a DAO, obviously that, yeah. that's sort of the point. Is, exactly, and it's and, not yours anymore. And I think you know user generated content can come from different angles as well. We yeah. we definitely not against user generated content. On the contrary, but for instance, we're more rather than to go letting everyone uh, develop their own experience on their own with no connection with the rest of the world, we'd rather give them the tools to actually make something that makes sense in that in that context of, of the one world that we're building. Um, and maybe some will say, will say, okay, so we can craft vehicles in Life Beyond. Good. They are meant to be more like transportation of people or goods kind of things, but why don't we make a racetrack out of it? And make it like this is like a uh, the F1 of the future of the F1 of dollars and because then you can become a racer or, or, or bet on this that still makes sense because um, it's still within the same kind of uh, uh, ecosystem uh, uh, initially um, so this is this is a little bit where we go in the same way I was mentioning like contracts and all that um, this is the same thing you know it's user generated content in the sense of this is not a their wise saying hey here's a mission okay we're gonna do that we're gonna it's gonna be like a, a, a game authored kind of space but uh, we also want to give the toolbox for the players to say hey uh, i need this particular type of uh, asset or resources and i don't want to go get there myself because i'm not an expert or i don't have the weapons level to do it or whatever then i can put out a contract say hey can you come with me or can you grab me this uh, i'll pay and um that's the type of user-generated mm -hmm. content that we're. Yeah, it's interesting. You say on the on the website somewhere is it a, a socio-tech metaverse. So you're getting you're getting sort of getting everything in there. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about how the the blockchain sort of works. So obviously we, the blockchain elements work. So we, we you sort of spoke about DAOs, and I guess I think that's sort of a, a bit of a mm -hmm. long way off, but everyone sort of gets an idea of what the concept there is. But um, on a more sort of um sort of sort of day by day basis, or, or sort of like immediate sort of gameplay basis, yeah. how how are you implementing? NFTs, tokens, how, how does that work? So the, I think we, we, we're implementing for two reasons. The first one is that true ownership for us is a, is a no-brainer. People should be rewarded for uh, the time they spend, the assets they craft or they manage to collect over time in the game. So obviously there is an NFT heavy aspect in our game. And, but the, the, right now the status of you know, the, 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 the technology and the integration within game there's a, still a lot of friction to move everything on chain. So um, our vision when it comes to NFTs is that we wanna, we wanna uh, uh, create NFTs with in-game utility and with in-game sense. So there is two ways that can happen. The first way is us, their wise, crafting those NFTs and putting them out for sales or for as a reward, um, either in-game or out of game. Um, and, uh, and player will be able to grab that and, and use them in game and then do whatever they want with it, either sell it, keep it, change it, whatever. The second one is, okay, you as a player during the game, the life span of the game, you might be able to craft some items or give certain items kind of a history. Like, okay, I've crafted that weapon level 10 and I was the first to kill the boss level 100. And that will be engraved in the history of the weapon. And what we want to uh, enable player to do is to turn that weapon, very special, unique weapon, into an NFT, whether because they want to keep it forever or because they think it's tremendously valuable and they want to make, they want to flip it and make, you know, some some bucks out of it. So this is this is the two way we are thing. So not every element in the game will be an NFT, but you can decide to turn certain of your key elements, key items into one. That's the first thing. The second thing is obviously. Um, uh, uh, around what we called the um, lands and the property within the game. So, um, as I said, during pioneering, you are kind of cleaning up the lands and making them available for settling. And once that's done, then the lands will be available for sales to public. And 
then this is this is a piece of ownership that you have which is obviously a key value in the whole economic system because you can build on it you can extract value from it you can extract resources from it but also the way we are seeing things see things at the moment is that we want to encompass within the land property some tokens so we're going to introduce a token later on this year probably um, and the lands that you're going to purchase or you get that you're going to own will over time grant you a certain amount of tokens based on the activity you're going to develop on it or that you ask other people to develop on it for you. Um, and the last thing, obviously, I was mentioning is the token itself. So the token it can, can be seen both as kind of a hard currency in the traditional gaming, free-to-play kind of gaming system, um, but also kind of a, um, a service currency or kind of a, a, a uh, governance currency. Um, that's that's one thing that you know people will be able to grab in different ways. So land mechanics is one way. Uh, a reward from from in-game uh, uh, contribution is another one. Um, and we're gonna have obviously the, the traditional kind of staking and 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 more like game fi kind of mechanism uh, coming coming next. So this is this is how how the whole blockchain comes in um, with the, with this key component. And I was as I was saying, we're also looking into integrating more purely gameplay centric elements like 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 using the smart contract as a tool to expand and the experience of the game rather than to just stick with what the uh, 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 game engine and the game design can can allow us to do okay cool um, that, that makes sense uh, just different sort of, sort of layered um, approaches to what how you're using the blockchain um, i mean i guess over the last certainly last sort of two months the last sort of six months in general we've seen you know um pretty much every every uh game token <clears throat> go down at least 80 percent if not if not a lot more from its all-time high so obviously uh, you know yeah. at, at least at, at least up to this point volatility has been sort of a key, a key part of general crypto markets you could argue oh, yeah. in the wider macro uh, economy as well um so so and then i think in some of those for some of these games uh, may, maybe not for the very high the high level ones or the, the, the best ones but for some some games that were you know sort of well thought through with, with decent teams behind them and, and maybe just they launched a token at the wrong time. Um, but those, some of those games are sort of sort of, sort of yeah. dead on arrival, or, or, or you know, it's very hard for them to sort of recover their economy. So, so clearly, you know, bringing blockchain, I guess you know, I'm very bullish on it. I, I think it provides these amazing advantages, um, which are going to be sort of key to building out a new type of mm -hmm. entertainment. But clearly, it, it does not come without um, some quite <laughs> potentially serious costs. So, so how, how do you sort of, um, looking at what's happened over the last sort of few months? How, how do you what what do you learn from that, and how does that sort of change how you particularly deploy some of these um, elements? I think yeah, it's a it's a very obviously very complex time right now, and um, I think one of the things we're looking at is we we as much as we want to we want to build on the blockchain, we want to build a product that is mm. a game first. So in in that sense, it hasn't changed much the roadmap in terms of pure product development. Um, the the changes that that occurred for us was more like okay, the temporality or the timing. At which, or the pace at which we want to, um, you know, introduce to the to the world uh, more NFTs, more tokens, more all, all, all of this, because what what this bear market uh, uh, sort of signal to us is don't 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 mm -hmm. rush out things before you have a pure utility and the core utility developed for anything you put on the on chain. That's one thing. The second thing I think for us is also if you're here to do quick cash grabbing then you're probably going to be screwed by this market uh, right now and i think that's the other you know very lucky point that that we have at there is that with the with the integration within the animoca we're not in the rush for securing funds for our making our project a reality we actually been developing it for quite a while we have a core playable product um and we have the support of animoca to make things the right way rather than to rush into anything so for us right now the market is obviously you know slow and 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 um definitely more more quiet or more you know risky um or risk averse maybe even um and that's that's a good thing for us because it gives us a little bit more time to actually do the things the mm. things the right way rather than to try to rush it through it and as I said, one of the key elements for us is to present every step of the way with core mechanics and core utility, and also to make sure that we have a product that is first and foremost functional, fun to play, 
and that makes sense when we introduce more elements that are blockchain centric like tokens yeah, i think it's definitely tokens. um the from from what i see the, the trend is now you can't you can't really expect to have a successful product if you're launching tokens six months before you have a product that yeah as you say i mean i it may not be that every every team can can launch their game and then have the product and then have sort of tokens coming in then but that's probably that's probably the gold standard that you want to do you want people to go right mm. playing the game understand it tokens come um you know rather than this sort of uh what we've really seen which is basically people using tokens at, to to raise money to hopefully make a game and then yeah happens. And maybe in, in a different context of a market yeah. that can work and that's that's that there is maybe nothing mm -hmm. nothing wrong there um as long as you have a clear vision and capacity to develop your product because ultimately only product yeah. speaks in my, in my good mind. so um talk, talking of uh, uh getting to stage now um so what is what is happening uh, next week uh what what is the product that is live then yeah absolutely super excited so next week on the 29th of june uh we're gonna open the early access of the alpha of life beyond so for the first time uh we're gonna open up to the largest possible audience the game uh after running some private testing uh sessions uh the past few uh, months so um during this this open alpha one um you will be able to experience the pioneering aspects of the game. So you will be invited to join uh, Dolos and uh, the base of operation of the agency that employs you um, called The Deep. And they will be uh, allowing you to go on five different type of expeditions. Um, each expedition having up to three level of difficulty. So you can replay a lot of those, those missions with various difficulty to gain various rewards. Um, and those expeditions you can do solo, duo, or up to four players. Um, and um, so the way we're introducing also the, 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 the gameplay, combat gameplay elements is through uh, different roles you can play uh, during those expeditions. So in Life Beyond, one of the things that is important to understand is we're not asking you to pick a class like in any other MMO, when you create your character. You just create a character with a good look and feel. And then um, the things you can do in the game are dictated by the equipment that you own. So if, let's say, I, I, I want to be a tank, then I'm going to need to have the loadout and the equipment for the tank. Uh, if I want to be a blacksmith, then I'm going to need probably, you know, the equipment for making that happen and, and being able to craft uh, items for people. So in the Alpha 1, you're going to be able to test uh, up to four the, the, the four different uh, uh, roles that we have. So um, two damage dealers, uh, mid-range, long-range, like snipers and, and assault rifle. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, more a uh, support role uh, with with tools to uh, help your, your teammates during during the expedition. And the last one is a tank, as I was mentioning, like more shotgun heavy kind of Agro grabbing, um, all the all, all the weapons and and the gadget that comes with those roles, uh, you'll be able to own and to upgrade. Um, we have three tiers of uh, uh, different upgrades, so you'll be able to experience all that. Um, and then we have two other things that are pretty cool. Um, we have what we call the player apartment. So the player apartment is a small room that every every player will have uh, access to. And to give everyone a feeling of persistency and ownership of a little bit of a of the place, so um, it's it's something that you know has no uh, real kind of uh, economic value, but it's more like a, a small space where you can uh, that you can decorate, that you can uh, store your different uh, outfits in, and, and and those kind of things, and it, it stays there uh, persistently. So you have that. Um, obviously, we're gonna have a lot of uh, uh, opportunities for you to customize your character. Uh, so you're going to have a shop where you can buy and trade some of the outfits. Some are exclusive during the early access, some are more rare. Um, and, and that's going to be kind of the first batch of content that we're going to release on the 29th. And to unlock the next content, because we have two other content packs available for the duration of the alpha. To unlock the next content pack, uh, the community will have to contribute to the whole game development. Uh, and so by playing different missions, different uh, um, scenarios or, or uh, you know, reaching certain goals within the game, um, players will unlock what they call the community objective. And what that objective is, is reached, uh, we're going to release the next 
content patch with more missions, more weapons, more difficulties, more everything. Um, and the last things I can tell you is that we have a, an engagement reward program that is attached to the game. So the more you play, the more um, the more you will be rewarded. And we're gonna we are going to open up a one million token pool as a reward for the players to grab. So uh, we're gonna release the whole details on that probably next early next week. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be the first time people will be able to grab some. Uh, that sounds highly games. highly incentivized gameplay there, and and those and those things that you get in the alpha are they permanent then uh, throughout? Uh, depends Some on somewhere. certain things will be permanent, certain things might not be. Um, we're still a very early. Everybody has to understand we, we're still very early in the development of this game. So when we say alpha, it's really alpha. You know, there are some things that are everything looks good, but there are some things that you know we're just testing there um, to make sure that we have a balanced and 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 fun gameplay. And so the, the strategy with, with, with this alpha, we, we're calling them alpha series. We're going to have multiple alphas across the next months and, and maybe even next year. Um, every time we're going to have an alpha, we're going to increase the set of features of one particular era. So right now you're testing, you're really testing the pioneering era. So in the next alpha, you're still going to be testing some pioneering era, but with a larger set of features, larger set of content. And we're going to introduce a new era. So next time we're going to have an alpha, we're going to introduce the settling and, and so on and so forth. And every time we're going to iterate, we're going to collect feedbacks and, and try to make it even more uh, uh, pleasant to, to, to play up to the point where we think, okay, we have the whole core elements. We have all the core systems. Now let's open live the service into beta and let's get the ball rolling. Now I think, again, that's that's one sort of aspect where, where blockchain does sort of play very well into that sort of, you know, all games now really have that sort of iterative process where you sort of release something and, it, and, yeah. and then you may sort of junk it and, and start again. And and obviously, you know, with, without blockchain, you can you can give people rewards because you have it on a centralized server. But there is something a little bit more enticing about you've actually you know actually earning some an ERC twenty exactly. token or, or an NFT um, that I think is just a bit more yeah. sort of concrete. And I, and I kind of think, you know, if, um, and I think it's also a good way for people to. Uh, uh, share the feeling of belonging, you know, um, because you can show it outside of the game, you can show it more easily. You can, you can, you can. You know, I think, I think it's a, it's a very important thing for us to be able to empower the community not only within the game but also with the whole ecosystem uh, of it. You know, whether it's on social media, on Discord, on on the different marketplaces, wherever they 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 are. Um, you know, we we want to be able to uh, uh, show them. Uh, token of appreciation and recognition for the support, the time they spent, uh, uh, you know, with the with us on this project, um, playing or participating in any way. And we should point out, in order to get the early access, you need to have uh, the passport NFT, uh, which is on. on yeah. NFT. So uh, early access, uh, early access uh, uh, requires uh, one of the four different uh, NFT that is uh, 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 at this point available in the collection. So we have uh, uh, three different types of AAKs, which are uh, a key, uh, effectively a key um, that was airdropped a few months ago um, to the early uh, community members, or the newly uh, launched uh, uh, Dolos passport that you can craft, uh, uh, and that comes with obviously the early access pass, but also a set of uh, utility and perks like. Uh, uh, whitely spots for future means and, and that, so that is uh, very nicely priced at five dollars at the moment on the uh, on the uh... yeah it just launched a few okay. hours ago so so, so good uh, good right very much look forward to that um, and, and, and I guess um, it's fascinating to see how, how that goes and, and definitely over time we can we can come back and, 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 and talk to you again and, and see how that's going happy to uh, just, just for me it's sort of interesting that as, as I say a, a project that I've sort of Sort of noticed for such a long period of time, going through various sort of sort of phases, and you kind of wonder, oh, I wonder if those guys are still making that. I wonder, I wonder what ever happened, what ever happened to them, and then <laughs> then you suddenly spring into spring into life, and then very quickly um, we'll get to get to see what you've been up to. So, thank you so much for your time, Vincent, and you're going to be very busy. Thank you, John. having a game and a baby. Goodness, I mean, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so so, so, that's so, so good luck. That's how, you, that's how we roll. Exactly. Thank you very much, like John. I uh, appreciate the support and the, the discussion. Um, and I uh, hope, hope you guys uh, will be trying Life Beyond yeah, anytime yeah. soon. And uh, thank you, of course, uh, to you who have been uh, listening and watching through the various methods of uh, consuming uh, blockchain gaming world. Uh, thanks very much. Every every week we're talking to the people who are building out this this new, uh, you know, I think, fascinating 
uh, aspect of, of gaming that, that brings, brings together a whole bunch of, uh, of really cool stuff in how you design games and certainly how you bring communities together and certainly how I think how you make these games very uh, uh, long, long, uh, what's, what's, the, what's the term? Uh, very very sort of long retention and and you know i, I think it's, it's gonna only make games better so um please subscribe to the channel and come back next time to see what's going on in the world of blockchain gaming world goodbye